Welcome to the Empire Builders Podcast, teaching business owners the not-so-secret techniques that took famous businesses from mom and pop to major brands. Stephen Semple is a marketing consultant, story collector, and storyteller. I'm Stephen's sidekick and business partner, Dave Young. Before we get into today's episode, a word from our sponsor, which is, well, it's us. But we're highlighting ads we've written and produced for our clients. So here's one of those. You've heard me say that I only hire good-natured techs. See, I learned at an early age how important this was when I met Dayton, an employee that had been with us for as long as I can remember. Dayton was first hired to operate a backhoe. Later, he delivered parts. When it got to the point where he couldn't drive, Dayton made coffee and emptied the trash. He did whatever he could to lend a helping hand. I'll never forget visiting Dayton at his home some years after he retired. He sat there in his lawn chair, proudly wearing his company uniform, which he wore nearly every day. When Dayton died, he was buried in that uniform. Now I understand that this is very unusual, but his heartfelt dedication is something I look for in every person I hire. Dayton would have wanted it that way. I'm Joe Zimmerman for Summers and Zims, and my solemn promise to you is that every tech I have is someone I trust with my very own family, home, and safety, which is why you can feel safe trusting them with yours. Remember, when you think plumbing, heating, and air, think Summers and Zims. Online at thegoodnaturedguys.com. Here are the Empire Builders podcast. Steve Semple, you gave me the topic for this podcast and I'm flummoxed. International Management Group. Well, it sounds very, very important. <laughs> well, uh, it I mean, is. Because they're international <laughs> and they're managing, they're, they're a group. You know, you know, sometimes we talk about ourselves as the Wizard of Ads group. Uh, we've got some partners that just have their name and group after them. Uh, so I get it. Who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here's what's really cool about this podcast. Believe it or not, International Management Group and Cool, I'm going to put together. So watch me. Watch me as okay. I do this. Yeah, yeah. It's actually an invention of an entire industry. We are going to actually witness the birth of an industry. That's pretty cool. A whole industry. So this business was founded by Mark McCormick in 1960, and it's now owned by a business called Endeavor. They bought it in 2013. It was sold to William Morris Endeavor for $2.3 billion. That's empire-sized. That's empire-sized. So this guy started something that never existed before and ended up selling it for $2.3 billion. And there's 3,000 employees in 25 countries. And I think you gave me a clue, but when you said Endeavor, it's a talent agency, right? Gold star, ring the bell for Dave. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. I somehow have heard of them, but these international <laughs> folks. <laughs> I hadn't heard of them. Because what they do is sports management. Well, see, if I, if I were a sportsing fan, then I would have known that. Yeah, so there you go. So when Mark was young, he was a sports nut, absolute sports nut. And at the age of six, he got hit by a car. And when he recovered from that, he was told, by his doctor, you'll never fully recover. You can't do any more sports. Sports are done. Now, his dad <laughs> didn't view golf as a sport, so his dad bought him some golf clubs and said, hey, you can go play that. And this became his passion, so much so that he qualified for the US Open in 1958. So the guy knew how to play the game. And when he was playing at Virginia College, he met another young golfer. And even though you're not a sports nut, you've probably heard of this guy. His name was Arnold Palmer. Oh, yeah. I, I have his tea every now and then. I had a really special opportunity a number of years ago. I had a chance to play a little bit of golf with Arnold Palmer. Oh, and I'll no put a kidding. picture on the show notes of myself with Arnold Palmer. What it was is he was celebrating his first professional victory was in Canada, and he was back celebrating that, and I had an opportunity to participate in that. So that was pretty cool. But so basically, one of the people that Mark met when he was at Virginia College was Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer headed off to be a professional golfer. Mark headed off to Yale Law School. Then he became a lawyer in Cleveland, but they kept in touch. They were buddies. They kept in touch. And in 1960, Mark had an idea. Here's what he noticed. He noticed the rising value of professional athletes. Golf in particular was really rising in popularity, and TV was coming on stream. And he had this idea 
of how to increase athletes' earnings. And he started with his buddy, Arnold. Here's what he did. He met with Arnold and he pitched him on this idea of a business that would represent professional golfers. And this idea was actually inspired by Clifford Roberts. Now, Clifford Roberts was President Eisenhower's inner circle man. He was a divisor, a protector, a counselor. He was there during good and bad. And Mark looked at that and said, this is what professional athletes need. They need somebody who acts in that manner and represents them. Palmer loved the idea. Palmer loved it because it would allow him to focus on golf. And Arnold Palmer talks about this in one of his early books, that this allowed him when he was playing a tournament to just focus on the tournament. Palmer liked the idea that he didn't have to think about the business of golf when he was playing or spending time lining up sponsors or doing all of this other stuff. Here's what ended up happening. In the first two years of working with McCormick, Palmer's endorsements went from $6,000 to $500,000 a year. Palmer won the Masters, he golfed with presidents, he endorsed Pennzoil and Hertz, he won the British Open, the PGA, the US Open, he won 62 tournaments, and he won the Grand Slam. Man had a huge, huge, huge career. And as I mentioned earlier, his first professional win was the Canadian Open here in Canada. And soon after this, other golfers were approaching McCormick to represent. He ended up representing Gary Player and Jack Nicklaus, which at the time were the three biggest players in golf and some of the most recognized athletes in the world. He then branched out in other sports, such as tennis and soccer, and he had clients who were Jimmy Connors and Pele and Tiger Woods. He then even went on to start a television division called Trans World International. And in 1990, McCormick was named the most powerful man in sports by Sports Illustrated. That's a big deal. That's an empire. That really is. And in 2003, following his death, Business Age said he invented, Mark McCormick invented the sports business. He started this industry. Now, how often do we get to see that? Stay tuned. We're going to wrap up this story and tell you how to apply this lesson to your business right after this. How's business? Yeah, good. Why isn't it great? Uh, we, we were growing 20, 30 percent every year for five years. Then we went flat in the last three. Growth used to be easy. Now, nothing we do seems to have the same effect anymore. If you're not growing, you're dying. And I can't stand to think we've hit the top and are coming back down. So you build a hell of a castle and you're worried. Maybe it's time to build an empire. Huh? What you got here won't get you to where you want to go. You need a fresh perspective. There's these guys that are looking for business owners just like you. Smart, customer focused, but with flat sales. What do they do? Build empires, but they don't work with just anyone. You have to be customer focused. So what exactly do they do? Well, some say they're marketers, but I call them crusaders. Check out their website at empirebuilderprogram.com. Like what you see, set up a meeting. Crusaders, empires, castles. I think someone's been getting so old they're medieval. Empirebuilderprogram.com. Check it out before you become a dinosaur. You mean dragon. <laughs> no, I mean dinosaur. They were good too, for a while. Sure you want to be just good? Empirebuilderprogram.com. Let's pick up our story where we left off, and trust me, you haven't missed a thing. That's a really cool story, but what's your takeaway for a small business owner in this? There's a couple of things here. So first of all, as we often talk about where you can really find inspiration is looking somewhere else. And I found it really interesting that the inspiration for this idea was looking at President Eisenhower and saying, wow, President Eisenhower had this guy Boy, wouldn't it be really interesting if a sports person had this guy? And it was right at the time that he was seeing this growth in this industry. And I just think it was really interesting that he was looking outside of the law. It wasn't a lawyer. He was looking at sports, which was his passion, right? And just looking outside and saw these things coming together and said, this would be a really interesting business. Now, granted, he also had a leg up. He had a buddy, Arnold Palmer. But... It was seeing those things coming together. But the other thing is, and we've talked about this in past podcasts, when you can attach 
your business to revenue, it's far easier to make money off of it. And that's the other thing he did. It wasn't that you're gonna have better quality of life and it wasn't that you're gonna become a better golfer. It's, dude, yes, you're gonna be able to focus on golf, but I'm gonna go out and get you your sponsors. Which what we know is a professional athlete doesn't wanna do that. Kudos to Arnold Palmer for realizing. He could have said, you know, that that's really cool, Mark, but I'm doing all right. I got $6,000 in sponsorship money or endorsement deals and stuff like that. And I'm doing all right. But to go to half a million, what he didn't know was how he was selling himself short. He didn't have time to talk to everybody about them. Right. Right. So, I mean, I've actually had clients tell me that one of the things that they sort of enjoy the most about being a Wizard of Ads client is that... They don't have to talk to all the media sales reps that are calling them all the time because they can just give them my number and they call me and I say, oh, well, thank you. yeah, go ahead and send me your information and blah, 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 right? And yeah, I handle all that for the client. And so they can focus on their business. And that's, that's exactly, like, let the athlete focus on the athlete aspect of it. Focus on playing the game. Now, the interesting thing is that's a sideline benefit that your client gets as a sideline benefit the athlete gets. It's not why they wrote the check. They wrote no. the check because it's like, you're going to get me more endorsements? Awesome. You're going to grow my business, Dave? Awesome. I discovered this other thing as well. The other thing I found that was interesting is he was comfortable focusing on one industry first, and the industry he knew, which was golf, and then branched out to others later. The lesson here for entrepreneurs to look at is, again, it's always that look outside the world and see these things and be aware of it and go, boy, how can I pull this together? And then if you can attach it to a revenue side on a business, you've probably got a service that you can go out and sell to people. And who would have ever thought, Dave, when we started this, when I said to you, we are going to do a podcast on the International Management Group that would actually turn out to be a cool story. <laughs> it really is a cool story. I just think that in instances like that, if there's some area of expertise that you can, as a business owner or an athlete, there are some things that you can outsource to somebody that really knows what they're doing, you should do that, especially if they're tied to revenue. Yeah, and I remember reading Arnold Palmer's book, and one of the things that he talked about was it got to the stage where unless his house was burning down, when he was in a tournament, no one called him or no one talked to him because everything was taken care of. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Please share us, subscribe on your favorite podcast app, and leave us a big, fat, juicy five-star rating and review. And if you have any questions about this or any other podcast episode, email to questions at the Empire Builders Podcast. Dot com.